Hello everyone, welcome back to PyLemon. In the last video, we talked about Python decorators. We discussed the syntax of a Python decorator and we also understood what are the advantages of using decorators in your Python code. In this video, we are going to learn about passing parameters inside a Python decorator and also what it means to debug a Python decorator. Let's go ahead and learn this. Now, we are going to understand both the concepts by using a simple problem. Let's look at the problem that we are going to discuss. Basically, we have to first write a function to return all the integers between two numbers as a list. Second thing, we have to write a decorator to square every element in the list. And finally, we have to write another decorator to cube every element in the list. Let's go ahead and so solve each of these problems. Now here you can see I have already written the code for the first two problems. I have a function called return list here that takes in two arguments and then returns all the integers between these two numbers basically by using the range method. right? And then I also have defined a decorator here called calculate exponential where I have a nested function called square wrapper which basically returns the square of all the integers of the list that is returned by my return list function. So basically it is going to take care of the first two problems. Now if you have a problem understanding what I am talking about, I would highly recommend you watching the previous tutorial on decorators where I introduced about the syntax of decorators, the advantages of decorators and the basic concept behind it. Alright, so now that we have a decorator ready for squaring every integer for all the numbers present in the list, how about we write a decorator for cubing it? Do you really think I'm going to write an additional decorator for it? No, because then we would be repeating ourselves. It is basically going to look similar to this kind of code and we are not going to get anything much out of it. So the best way to deal with this is by passing parameters inside our decorators. How to do that? In order to pass parameters inside our decorators, we basically have to nest this entire function inside another function. So basically have an outer layer for this function where we can pass our parameters. Let's go ahead and do that. So let's add an outer layer to our decorator. So here I can say define exponent number is just a random function name that I came up with and inside this we have to pass a parameter which is basically going to tell the function whether we want to square it or cube it or whatever number we want to raise the integers all right so here I can say I can say the parameter is num and basically then we have to nest this entire function inside this exponent number now as we have written square wrapper here make sure you don't forget to return the original calculate exponent function. So here I can say return calculate exponent without the brackets. So it's basically the same concept of closure where we are returning the function, you know, and not executing it. And here instead of calculate expression, I can say exponent number and then pass in any parameter that I want. So I can say three here. So basically I want all the integers to be cubed. Now, don't forget, we still have hard coded two here. Basically, we wanted to calculate the square of every integer, but now we want to calculate the cube. So here, I, instead of two, I can say num. So basically, it is going to uh, whatever parameters we pass inside our exponent number function, it is going to raise every integer to the power of that number. So now if I run this, you can see that it is returning me 8, 27 and 64. So basically uh, the return list returns us 2, 3 and 4 using the range and then this decorator cubes every element in the list and then we get 8, 27 and 64, right? It makes sense. So now by using parameters, I can use any number, I can pass any number that I want inside my decorator and my decorator is going to raise every integer to that number. See how handy that is? Now let's move on to understanding about debugging decorators. But more importantly, why do we even need them? I have a nice example for you. Let's say we define another function here called define add numbers. And then uh, we don't pass in anything. We are just testing. Inside it, I'm going to print nothing. All right. 
just a simple test now if i print add numbers and then without parentheses and then i use the special variable name it is basically going to return me the name of the function see so it basically says which function is this coming from now instead of this when i say print return list remember our return return list function is has a decorator with it right so here if i say return list dot name and i use the same special variable here if i run this you will see python is returning me square wrapper it's not returning us return list right as it returned the original function name in our previous example it is returning this function why because we have a decorator uh, attached to the function however we don't need that a lot of time when you're writing code you want to know where the problem is coming from of course like uh, this is the decorator and this functionality is being added on top of this function but then still we want to know the origin of the function we want to know okay every time i'm running this function uh, i want to if i want to debug it i want to be pointed to this function right for this purpose this is one of the disadvantage of using a decorator instead of pointing it to the origin of the function it will point you to the decorator function which is adding the functionality to that function so we can debug our decorators better by using a library called as function tools so here i can say from function tools import something called as wraps now what we are going to do is just outside our innermost nested function here being the square wrapper we are going to use the wraps method and we can say at the rate wraps and then inside it we are going to pass in the function name so what it will do is it will automatically update the attributes for the square wrapper function to the original function so now if i run this you see now python is returning us return list so basically instead of returning a square wrapper it is returning us return list the origin of the function and then by looking at the decorator we can see which decorator it is pointing to and we can debug our code in a much better way so this is the advantage of using something called function tools and using wraps and basically this is how you can debug it better i hope you like this tutorial if you like my tutorials make sure to subscribe to pylanin and like the videos and share it with your friends i will be back to you again with an another interesting tutorial thank you i will see you next time